final thoughts on that. We'll get into a little bit of IndyCar talk, and then we'll get into some uh, college tribute. But uh, certainly, Clint Wood was, is going to be missed just because of the fact of when you, whenever you lose a legacy like Clint Wood, I mean, it's a, it's, it's a pretty big story. Yeah, and there aren't many left. Uh, Judy Don Levy has passed away. Uh, Glenn Wood has passed away. Uh, Bud Moore has been in poor health for the last several years as well. So uh, beyond Bud Moore, there really isn't, uh, you know, a big name from, you know, years past in the early days uh, that's still out there other than maybe the Petties, et cetera. But uh, beyond that, uh, yeah, it'll be very interesting to see uh, how things go uh, as we draw closer and closer to Daytona and obviously uh, with some of the veterans, uh, Kyle Larson, et cetera, and the Chili Bowl tonight. So, a lot of chances for some breakthroughs, uh, certainly involving NASCAR tied drivers uh, over the next few weeks. And obviously, there's a couple also running in the Rolex 24 next weekend. So, a loaded opportunity for several uh, NASCAR tied drivers uh, to make an impact uh, here over the next few weeks. Yeah, absolutely. We have a huge NASCAR uh, following here on the show and a huge uh, racing uh, sh- uh, on our show. We we certainly don't want to ignore uh, the IndyCar series as well as we get ready to go. But, uh, you know, you mentioned the Chili Bowl. We, we talk about that every year. Uh, you and I and, and Steve Wilson, he's getting ready to get on a boat in Florida to go on a cruise. So he's He's not able to join us. Well, we're getting close to the Daytona 500. I'm so glad that you mentioned the Rolex 24. Well, let's talk a little bit about what's coming up in racing, especially this Chili Bowl event. A lot of people are like, what's a Chili Bowl? i tell you what, it is the best. i, I tell you what, it is the best racing indoor. No one's ever seen an indoor racing event. Well, you got to watch the Chili Bowl event. Talk well, a little bit about those that may not know what Chili Bowl is and why does it make it so exciting? And by the way, I'm going to make chili this afternoon after the show. Go right ahead. Well, obviously, 350 entries uh, is not a uh, fluke. And then, of course, the quick trip center and Tulsa, the indoor track uh, for the midget cars, always an interesting situation. You have multiple drivers from the U.S. and also from Australia, New Zealand, et cetera, also some from Canada. Uh, big week uh, so far. As I mentioned, Kyle Larson, who also has started the uh, Dosville Nationals the past few years, one of, one of the uh, preliminaries, another Driver with NASCAR ties, Rico Avery was a winner this week. Uh, Justin Grant, Tanner Thorson. So it's uh, going to be interesting to see how things play out uh, coming up uh, this weekend. And then also you have the son of Vince Welch, uh, Dylan Welch Racing. Uh, you have the son of Jimmy Elledge uh, running Carson Elledge. So a lot of names uh, with NASCAR and uh, racing ties uh, as far as tradition, uh, also in the field uh, coming up this weekend and with the finale uh, starting uh, later today. Let's talk a little bit about that Schmidt Aero deal uh, that allows SPM to create IndyCar, the big four. I, I mean, that's a huge, huge uh, conversation starter uh, when you when you look at that, Matt. What are your thoughts? Well, we had a feeling they were going to be eventually sponsoring two cards. I would say that years ago was considered a possible candidate. He would have been the narrow tie driver along with James Hinchcliffe. Uh, just delayed just a little bit because of the sponsorship. So they're going to sponsor at least two cars with uh, Hinchcliffe and the new driver, Marcus Erickson, and possibly a third if Robert Wickens could come back uh, before the end of the year. So we'll see how things go with this. But, uh, yeah, this is a, not just a surprise. I think this was uh, the writing was on the wall with Arrow's interest in the sport. Uh, even with spite of the near-fail crash involving James Hinchcliffe a few years ago, it shows they have – interest in the sport and for IndyCar that's always a plus so if you have a spot that's interested uh, you want to keep them on as much as possible well let's uh, get it do you have any uh, IndyCar uh, funny season news for us before we get in to some uh, college tubage yeah it's been very interesting over the last uh, couple of weekends we've seen a lot of big names uh have trouble winning games. Of course, uh, Duke, the first time in their history at Cameron Indoor that they've lost to an unranked opponent uh, at home when they've been number one. Uh, that happened against Syracuse on Monday. Notre Dame came close to upset North Carolina at Chapel Hill. Unfortunately, it beat shorthanded. They couldn't pull it off. And, uh, yeah, things are still a revolving door. And you could have a scenario that uh, despite uh, being – Losing to a 16th seed last year, uh, Virginia is still undefeated. Could be a number one seed, if not the number one seed uh, overall again uh, in just a couple months' time. So things are really getting interesting as far as Virginia, Duke, Michigan, uh, those three. And uh, then the question is, who gets the number four number one seed? And uh, it could be Gonzaga, and there's a couple other candidates uh, that also could be a play for that spot. 
We're talking with Matthew Embry of WSBT up in South Bend, Notre Dame country. Uh, so talk with us a little bit. Notre Dame basketball kind of falls short this week. Uh, they, they've, they've got the uh, they, they've got the Wolf Pack of, of, of Carolina State going on today. Uh, man, Notre Dame in the Fighting Irish has just kind of fell short what has happened what's going on there in Notre Dame country do we push the panic button yet or is this is this still part of what's going on we talked about this at the beginning of the season but it just seems like 67 guys are on scholarship so that doesn't that death is a possibility and the early obviously running out of gas is always a concern and then the injuries have absolutely been uh, brutal uh, losing uh, Rex Fluger to a torn ACL uh, DJ Harvey has been in and out of the lineup due to injuries. Uh, injury bug has affected John Mooney as well. So, yeah, it's been uh, certainly a limited opportunity chances right now. You're having to play a lot of freshmen uh, that were not expected, and that's normally not the situation uh, Mike Corey wants to deal with. Uh, usually he has them ready to go junior or sophomore, and he's having to, you know, bump that trend because he just doesn't have the players. Uh and a lot of freshmen are having to really take over the main duties uh, at this point of the year. I mean, we've had some decent performances from uh, Juwan Durham, uh, Prentice Sub, et cetera, and Nate Leshevsky, but uh, that's a lot to ask for when you're having to play four or five freshmen, uh, and especially against a uh, cheese grater of a schedule that, like the one you have at the ACC. I tell you what, it's going to be exciting to see what happens. Another game online today here in our home country, if you will. Obviously, we got to talk about IU and Purdue. I tell you what, IU dropped. Can we say dropped a turd? Dropped a turd against Nebraska, and then now, now we we we've seen, they're twelve and five. We look back and we say, oh, well, IU is kind of like like dropping the ball here, but they're 12 and five. So plenty, plenty of time to go, but that two o'clock today, they're up at Mackey arena. They better come with their a game and they better come better than what they do. They better be the better polished turd, if you will. <laughs> right, man. Against against uh, Purdue. Uh, obviously whenever, anytime IU and Purdue comes together, we, we, we eliminate all uh, records, anything that comes the, 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 that is said. But today, 2 o'clock, Mackey Arena, Lafayette, Indiana, West Lafayette, Indiana, uh, Purdue, and uh, Indiana University. What are your thoughts? I think if IU wants to be a contender to make a run in the NCAA tournament, they have to win this game. Uh, there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. This is a Purdue team that is not nearly as good as the team that was a potential Final Four team a year ago. Uh, Matt Pater has made no ifs, ands, or buts about that. Uh I think you look at the possibilities right now. Uh, Purdue has just had a lot of players that they're relying too much on Carson Edwards. I mean, you can't expect a guy for a power conference team to score 25 points tonight just to keep you relevant. And uh, eventually that's going to catch up with Purdue. Everything on paper says IU should win this game, and they need to come through and get the victory, uh, like I said, to remain relevant. Uh, the loss to Nebraska obviously was embarrassing for uh, the team and for everyone in Bloomington, no question. Uh, it's a loss that they could not afford to have, and they need to get back on track. And what better way to do that but to uh, sack your rival uh, on their home court? Well, here's what I hope happens. And then what I did not like to see with IU, and we'll move on to some of these other games. It's just like, well, we just blocked a shot. We're just going to not. We're just going to take our time getting on down the court. They totally played like a bunch of lazy uh, uh, an acronym, but, but in 2019, we probably should. But they, they play like a bunch of lazy people. They deserve to loss. They beat themselves with Nebraska. And, and I hope, because if, if they don't, and they get beat by Purdue, you made a valid point to get into the NCAA. No, that's not going to keep put them out of the NCAA tournament. But, yeah, if they want any hopes of, of – uh, because at least – we're, we're twelve and five, and at least only uh, four of those are ones that we could we could look at. Was it going to work? Let's let's talk about one of those. Obviously, be in Michigan. Michigan is on fire. Uh, they go against Wisconsin today. Uh, number two, Michigan, uh, Wisconsin host them. I think that the Wolverines are, are on a roll. We're we're talking about a Final Four team here against uh, the Michigan Wolverine, the Michigan Wolverines, and the West Wisconsin Badgers. 
Well, as you know, Wisconsin at the Kohl Center is always tough to beat, but I think Michigan's got enough firepower to find a way to get a victory, and it's a quality win, even though Wisconsin is not uh, what the team that was making it to the Final Fours the last few years. They're still open, even at 11-5. Uh, this game will be close, but I think Michigan will stay good to 18-0 to tonight. Well, <laughs> can I just say I hope not? This, 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 I think Michigan in college basketball, especially in the Big Ten, like the New England Patriots this weekend. We want Michigan to lose, and we want we want the New England Patriots to lose. My gosh! But I tell you what, I'll give credit where credit's due. Uh, the Michigan Wolverines are certainly uh, uh, just checking off the boxes and doing what whatever they have to do. Let's move on over to the Tar Heels. Uh, obviously, they take on uh, Miami. I don't think there's a lot to talk about here in this game, uh, but obviously, number 13, UNC. But at the same time, as we know, historically, historically, uh, the Tar Heels struggle against the Canes. Considering the UNC has looked very iffy the last three times they played at Chapel Hill, uh, the road game, even though it gets a very mediocre Miami team, is still going to be a very tough one for them. I would not be surprised if somehow, some way, they found a way to lose this game. Yeah, exactly. That's well, if history's on our side, uh, Miami's going to love this game. Let's go. Let's move on down south here. Arkansas against number eighteen Mississippi. First of all, let's talk about this Mississippi team. They are a team that just has been able to going back to checking off boxes. Have been able to do that check, check, check. But Arkansas, again, here, we got one of those this funky matchups where Arkansas is, is on the road and does very well, and historically against Mississippi has not done very well. I mean, this Mississippi is has not done very well against Arkansas. Go ahead. Read this against top competitions. I mean, they gave up 100 points to Tennessee last weekend. Even though Old Miss is not known as traditional power, I think Old Miss has – Finally put together something right now where they can be competitive, and I think they should have no problems beat Arkansas uh, in Starkville for what am I thinking? It, it, that's Mississippi. I don't know where it is, but all I know is I, I had the same thing. I had the, I had the same. I had the uh, same issue there. So that's fine. Sorry about that. Uh, no, it's my fault. Go ahead. Go ahead. Well, like I said, Ole Miss should easily win this ball game, no question. Uh, Arkansas is not the same team they've been in the last couple of years. They really plummeted. And like I said, I think they just flat out quit against Tennessee. I mean, you do not give up 100 points in the SEC unless you are not a, unless you are extremely careless uh, as a team in general. And I think Arkansas meets that, checks all those boxes right now. And uh, I think it's going to continue against Ole Miss. If they tell you close to beating the Rebels, I will be stunned. Talking with Matthew Embry up at WSBT, uh, who carries a lot of hats with the balance, and we uh, appreciate it. 917-889-8516 is our digits. If you want to call and talk some college hoops with us, talking about SEC, we've got another SEC matchup, Alabama, not football. Can we can we just say hey, amen? We're not talking about Alabama football anymore, <laughs> or at least right now. We're going to be talking about it again here in a, in a few short months. But at least right now, we're not talking about it. But you mentioned Tennessee. Tennessee, strong, strong team. The Volunteers. Now, obviously, they're ranked number three for a reason. Alabama at Tennessee, good matchup. Yes, I like it, but I think Tennessee's going to do this. Well, I give Alabama credit. They were a much better team now under A.B. Johnson. But uh, Tennessee, uh, Rick Barnes has found something about this team. And trust me, a 25,000-seat uh, arena, it's extremely loud there in Knoxville, and it gets real raucous. So if Alabama gets off to a slow start, uh, they're going to be feeling the heat early in this game. The question that on my mind is, though, is Tennessee keeps winning. Uh, what will they do against a team like Kentucky, especially when they have to go to Rupp Arena to take them on in uh, a couple weeks from now? That's going to be the real ultimate test to see – in my mind, whether the Vols are legit or not. <laughs> well, I think they're legit. I, I don't know. I don't know if I'm ready to throw them in the Final Four, but based on what, just on what you said earlier about Tennessee, they are a great team. Kansas, number seven against West Virginia. I'm disappointed in West Virginia. West Virginia is kind of one of those teams that I like to follow and have fun with, but. And they always seem to be there in basketball, but this year it just seems something's missing. Something's a miss here, and they got number seven Kansas today. I think they're going to struggle, but more importantly, what is going on with West Virginia? Well, we 